in my mind I was going to um, preach on something similar to what we were being, um, what the theme was at the, uh, at the fellowship meetings. And you'll find that in 2 Timothy 2.2, 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, the theme was to commit, um, to commit our, uh, to the next generation. So we're going to commit to the next generation. That was a theme of the, uh, the fellowship meetings. But 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, the word of God says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Today's subject will be surrendering to the Lord. Surrendering to the Lord. But I think I'd like to just read through this chapter. It won't take us long. And then we'll, there are seven things that I want us to look at this morning. Seven things we need to look at. So the word of God in front of you and opened and we'll start at verse 1. But just remembering that the springboard text is verse 2. They are therefore my son. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned. Husbandman, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And the word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hermanius and uh, Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, and that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Isn't that interesting? Today some people think, you know, the resurrection already happened, or or something like that, they're erring, and it overthrows the faith of some, because we're not in the tribulation now certain aspects that have not happened yet but some people's faith has been overthrown nevertheless the foundation Will purge himself from the charity peace with them that call the Lord out of a pure heart. at his will. There are seven things which I want to look at this morning. 
And it's got to do with surrendering our lives to the Lord and committing our way unto Him. But it starts out here in verse 1. He says, Thou therefore my son, my son, or my daughter. You know, Paul knew Timothy as like as he was his son. He wasn't in the physical sense, but in the spiritual sense, he called him his son. And he says to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The first word we want to look at this morning is faithful. Faithful. Commit thou to faithful men. And the things that thou have heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou unto faithful men. Now we need to surrender to the ministry. You know, for the next generation, it's generation Z to be taught the word of God. You know, generation Z, they're, they're seeking for something new these days and they're looking for leaders, but they're not finding them. What we're finding is apostasy today in a lot of churches. We're finding apostasy. Governments that are going out of control, they're more authoritarian than anything else. Um, people look back at history and say, oh, look at all the religious wars that caught all the deaths. Well, most of the deaths, that's a lot. Most of the deaths have caused... Well, look at Stockholm, China, all the other places where it's been authoritarian rule. They've killed their own people. And that's not religion. It's socialism. It's communism. And we've seen it through the years. It's not religion. It's just people making up an excuse. It's not true. But we need to surrender to the ministry, to commit unto the next generation. You need to commit to your church. We need to commit to our churches, the Lord's churches. That's where we need to be surrendered to. You know, it could be packing up the chairs, it could be Sunday school teaching, maybe the cleaning roster or, or a soul winning program, or maybe a, a track delivering ministry. I know there's something we do need, and that's youth nights. I really want to do something of a Friday night. I know lots of people travel, and, and I'm sort of hoping we'll just start opening up of a Friday night and just see what happens. We could be practicing music then. God knows we do need practice, and I mean that reverently. <laughs> we do. And it's, it's a struggle to find time at times. But yeah, if we could just get together, and maybe just as a group, because just one poor bunny up the front and another bunny over there and I'm not mixing with him, <laughs> you can see what happens. But if we get a, you know, half a dozen people together, well, then we can start to make a difference. And Andy can help us sing right. <laughs> he's, still, he's still working on me. And I know I'm a, I know I'm a problem child, but um, <laughs> we need it. And that's what happens. Like We need to commit to these things. And if we commit to this, we commit to music, then one day we'll be able to lift the roof off. We'll be able to sing loud and proud. We just need to surrender ourselves to the Lord and, and to commit ourselves to his church here. You know, and then there's building up keep, um, things like that. There's still lots of things that we need to do. And to be faithful, we need to be involved together. Involved together. You know, I think there's something that Paul was trying to tell Timothy. You know, you need faithful men, faithful women to help in the church. And I think maybe, maybe Timothy was struggling to find faithful men. In the first century, there's still a lot, of, a lot of apostasy going on then. Even in the first century, Satan was hard at work trying to destroy the churches. But to be faithful, that's the first point this morning. We need to be faithful. Faithful coming as, as much as lieth in us every Sunday. Be faithful. See, that's how you commit your way unto the Lord. You commit your way unto the, unto the church, which is people. You're committing to one another. And you're surrendering. See, there's not, a, not a surrendering going on these days. There's not. It's all about me and what I can get. It doesn't suit me, so I'll change my, I'll do something else on a Sunday. Let's go play whatever the case may be. We need to be totally surrendered to the Lord. Then you see the next word is Teach who shall be able to teach others also. How can we get people to teach unless we train? And the training begins in the house of God, as well as judgment. It begins in the house of God. So it's so training. You know, this is, this is like an institution that trains the, the next generation. Generation Z needs to be taught, and they need to be taught sound doctrine. Without doctrine, we will fall in a hole. But we need to be able to teach and this is why we have study groups. 
You know, we, we teach people the word of God. And that's why we have books here for this, is to teach and to grow people in the Lord. For a new convert, there are certain things you need to know about what has happened, happened inside you and the, and the transformation that's taking place with inside you. And then we need to train men and women for the ministry. As I mentioned, music is one of them. And we need to do this. We've got plenty of spots up here for young children to jump in and, and play, whatever. Andrew is more than, more than willing to train. All they've got to do is come up with a Sunday and play with him. Hey, you can't do any worse than me. So <laughs> let's, let's be honest here. But we need training. We need to train each other. And if you have something that you can assist with, well, it's, it's a benefit to the church and everyone benefits from it. But we need to surrender ourselves to the Lord to do this. So help me, I know we need a new song leader. Um, I can give someone all the, or on how to, how to start a lot of these songs up, but we need someone who's able to, song and be, um, to, be able to sing and be strong in the voice. My, my, my mind is still in the message, and that's where I should be concentrating. So as we get more people, we can get somebody who can say, hey, look, I'm lead singing. I've got Andrew, if you listen to him, I've struggled with him. But if the thing is, you can do that. And this is what a church should be doing. And this is what committing is all about. There are plenty of other things we can commit to in the world. Sport, shopping, going for a ride, for a drive, coffee. There's lots of other things we could be doing. That has no eternal value. No eternal value. At the judgment seat of Christ, you know, is it going to matter what, what football team failed or the football team you didn't go and see or, or, or the football team that you gave up on a Sunday so you could go there and watch the footy or play the sport or, or whatever else? That's, that's going to be so unimportant on Judgment Day. It really is. It's, it's not going to be measured. We'll see shortly what will be measured. We'll see shortly. The third point is endure hardness as a soldier. Verses 3 and 4. They are therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You see, we're soldiers. No man, and I mean no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. You know, good soldiers endure the fight and don't give up. We don't give up. What happens if a soldier gives up? What, happens, what would happen to Ukraine if the soldiers just decided to wave the white flag and give up? The whole country would go. It's the same with our churches. What if we just give up on sound doctrine? What if we just give up on bad hymn singing <laughs> and decide just to, just to play the, you know, the, the latest hip-hop song that we'll play without any meaning? I know my singing's bad, but the, look at the words. <laughs> the words. The words do mean something. So the thing is, if we let these sort of things slide, you know, we, we haven't really fought, and we are to endure, and we don't give up. Now, it is a spiritual warfare in our churches. It's a spiritual warfare in this church. It is. And Satan's going to attack. Count on it. Satan will attack. And he'll attack you and me in any way. It may even come from another Christian. Unknowingly. Unknowingly. But Satan will attack. And don't get entangled with the things in, or the cares of this life. Now I often think of that just you know, being in business. I've got to be careful not to, to get that empire building mentality in again. I used to have that. And I thought, well, the Lord was in it. Maybe he was, but then he's not in it anymore. <laughs> Things have changed. Obviously, I was concentrating too much in the empire building. That's not what he wants. Well, where's that going to leave me in the judgment seat of Christ on that day? Oh, you had a successful... Right? Now, what, what did you do for me? <laughs> Who did you speak to? Was there someone you could have handed a Bible to or a hand tract? You know, that's why we, one thing we do do when we go away on, on our motorbikes, we do have hand tracks we do give to people. It's used as an opportunity. Yes, it's a bit of an excuse too, and I've got to watch that, and it's not just an excuse to go for a ride, but use it, use it as a ministry at least. Get the word out. See people you don't see before. Normally if we're down at the island, uh, watching the GP or whatever, you've got their badges on our back, and someone will see it and come up and start talking. What's this all about? Ah, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> You see, you're then being granted permission to talk to someone. 
a good soldier does. You're always looking for that good shot. Bring the word of God to. And you pray that it will hit the mark. You pray that it will hit the mark. So don't get entangled in the things of this life and the cares of this life. I know we, we can go through hard times and tough times and even with families and at times we think, wow, you know, this is getting me down, Lord. But then we look up and say, okay, pray then let it go. Don't try and manipulate the situation. If you want peace and he says he will give you peace, John, what is it, John 16, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John Andy and I were looking at it last night, 16.33, it says this, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me, Christ, ye might have peace. Ye might have peace, ye will have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So no matter what happens, the world has already been overcome for you. And to have good cheer. Even when things seem to be going wrong. You can have perfect peace. And the fourth thing I want to look at is lawful in verse 5. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Now this is like a spiritual athlete competing as per the rules. And that's why Paul has used this several times as an athlete. You're, you're competing for the high mark, the prize of the calling of God. He wants you to compete. He's got something for you in the next life. And maybe even in this life, he's got something for you if you strive to achieve for him. Now, it is possible to fall into the mistake of thinking that we can make up our own rules for our Christian life. But yet there are certain rules you've got to strive lawfully. For some people, their special arrangement goes something like this. I know this is sin, but God understands. Have you thought that before? I know this is sin, but God understands. So I'll just keep on sinning. Now, this goes against the attitude of an athlete who must compete according to the rules. So as we're striving, we're doing it for, with the rules. We're doing it with the Word of God. With the Word of God. So we need to strive for Christ. 1 Corinthians, please, just 1 Corinthians. Keep your bookmark there, but just go to 1 Corinthians. Just back a few pages. 1 Corinthians 9, 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. And cranky, we're not getting upset, we're not arguing with people. Okay? Temperate in all things. So you're not letting things becoming even a addicted to certain things, temperate. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, so fight high, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep up. Lest that by any means when I have preached to others, oh my I cast away. So we keep ourselves in control. And this race is a race. Our life is likened unto a race. And we must strive for the mastery of it. And not let our wicked nature have mastery over us. It also says, talks, the Bible talks, we'll turn there now to 1 Corinthians 3, of gold, silver and precious stones. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. This should be a well-known section of scripture. But just keep this in your mind as we go through today's sermon. 1 Corinthians 3, 12 to 15. The Word of God says, Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest or made known. For the day shall declare it. Mm -hmm. It shall declare it. Because it shall be revealed by fire. So whatever we've done for the Lord will be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. You know, when you're 
when you're striving for the mastery and doing it lawfully, you're, you're striving as an athlete. You, you don't go cheating and run across the field and finish at the finish line. You, you go the whole way around the oval, don't we? Whether it's the 100-yard dash or the 200 or the 400. I remember running as a kid. I didn't mind the 400 metre. It was all right. The 800 was a little bit long. <laughs> but the 400, I didn't mind. You just start to get the oxygen in and you can, and you can take off. But you do it lawfully. At the end, there is what the Bible says that for Christ, that we can do these things as gold, silver, and precious stones. And then there's wood, hay, and stubble. So we do it according to the rules and we do it lawfully. We do it lawfully. In point five, we look at the husbandman. The husbandman says here that laboreth first, sorry, must be first partaker of the fruits. So to be committed unto the Lord, we need to work as it were like a farmer does. We're ploughing up the ground and getting it ready to sow. It's like with the children out there in Sunday school. The ground is being ploughed up for them and the seeds are being sown. Now this is important in the life of a church. I can't overemphasize or stress as much as I can the importance of Sunday school. And we really should be here for them. They're the next generation. They're the next generation of preachers. They're the next generation of, of maybe pastors' wives or, or even missionaries. We don't know what the Lord can do, but I know he can do a lot. You know, this little church here has got a, has got a chance of seeding in an, another church in another country, all for authority. Big things. What is, how does it go? Big things from little things grow. How does it go again? From little things, big things grow. That's right. And it's true. It's very true. So a farmer does the ploughing and the sowing, and we are his husbandry. Turn back, please, to one, I should have told you to keep your fingers there, but 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We'll start piecing some of this together. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and we'll go to, no, hang on a second. Um, uh, 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 just bear with me. Yes, and I think it's the, the first verses before it. So we go to verse, verse 9, chapter 3, 1 Corinthians 3, 9. For we are labourers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how we build thereon. So once again, we are husbandmen. And this is what we've got to commit ourselves to, to being husbandmen and indeed husband women. In 2 Corinthians 6.1, 2 Corinthians 6.1, please just turn there briefly. 2 Corinthians 6.1. We then as workers together with him beseech you that you receive not the grace of God in vain. We beseech you. Workers together. Workers together. You see, so we are likened in the word of God to as farmers, all working together, sowing the seeds, ploughing up the ground, sowing it, watering it with the pure word of God. Well, what happens if you, if you contaminate the seed with bad water, with something that's got, oh, I don't know, poison in it? Roundup, something like not the word of God. You're going to kill that plant, aren't you? And this is where f the false Bibles of today are killing, are killing the hearts and souls of our children because it's poison to them. It changes the gospel of God into a lie. It does. It really does. It is so important to have sound doctrine. So we need to also labour in word and doctrine. 1 Timothy, back to Timothy again, but go to 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honour, especially they who labour in the word and doctrine. Labour in the word and doctrine. You see, doctrine is important, which is, what, which is why we don't read the old Bible. We understand that there is only one word of God. It's, the, it's called the doctrine of preservation. And there is a doctrine of preservation, preserve his word. I've given quite a few sermons on that. 
and it's, and it's, it's, it's uh, in the Word of God that He is preserving it. He is preserving it. But doctrine is important. And also we see today that we, thanks to YouTube and everything else, we've got many, many preachers on the internet, haven't we? You know, some are Calvinistic, some are Armanist, um, some are just way off the deep end. And when we come to watch all these people, we're in danger of doing something that we shouldn't be doing. Like looking at some and then I spit out the bones and chew the meat as it were. Um, but I only have about three that we play of an evening. I just don't flip it to any old person and some old lobster's got to say about the word of God when they're probably right off the, off the Richter scale. So we're not meant to have more than one shepherd. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And that's what we are in danger of doing. Having more than one shepherd. Ecclesiastes. Uh, straight after Proverbs. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 11. The word of God says here, The words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the master of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. One shepherd. So if we're, if we're listening to a lot of different shepherds, it's really not right. We need to be listening to one shepherd. Ecclesiastes 12.11. It's just after Proverbs. Before the Song of Solomon. That's all right. Which are given from one shepherd. And I know there's, there's lots of quotes, and it was one of the sermons at the fellowship meetings. Um, there's lots of quotes and, and I agree with lots of quotes but then he brought out the point and emphasised that that person was either a hyper-Calvinist or something and should we really be listening to what they say are good but then if you're really starting to think well this person's money and then they start after a while start preaching bad doctrine about Calvinism and how God chooses who he wants to save and chooses who he wants to send to hell well then we're listening to an, a false shepherd and he's supposed to be listening to one shepherd. One shepherd. So just beware as you, as you look uh, on YouTube and, and other pastors and preachers. Many are okay. Fine. But just beware. We just need to be aware. Point six. Uh, back to Timothy, please. Timothy chapter 2 of 2 Timothy. Point six is study. In verse 15. You see, you've got to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the, worth of tr the, uh, the word of truth. Study. To study without distractions. I heard one term over the week, and it was called distractor vision. Distractor vision. Television. Distracts us. We're always at the we're distracted. We're not, for a start, we're not reading the Word of God. Yes, I, I'm, I'm hoping you can just manage, it, manage yourself in those respects. I'm sure you can. But sometimes we can be distracted and then we just lose sight of time. And what are we looking at? Well, games we were just talking before when we got here early this morning about virtual reality, those glasses that they're of. VR, I think we call it, virtual reality. Well, it's another distraction. It's from what is reality, what is real, that Christ came to die for your sins on the cross of Calvary, while we're looking at virtual reality of whatever you want to make it. My goodness, it's impossible. We want to make what we want to make it. And virtual reality is one way of doing it. It takes us off the Word of God. So we've got to study. We don't need to be distracted, excuse me, from studying the Word of God. See, unless you study, you won't know all things as given in the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 19 to 20. It says we are to teach people all things. All things. So if we're not studying, then we're not learning all things. Which is what, uh, why we have those little books. When someone gets saved, we give them the book so you can, on your road to knowing all things. <laughs> so that when you do hear other preachers preaching, you can pick up with your ear that something's not right there. Because it goes against the word of God. 
and then you are protected by the word of God. You see, we need to rightly divide the word of truth, straight and not crooked. We need to rightly divide the word of truth. You know, we, when you cut something, you like to cut it nice and straight. I know it's a bit of wood when I'm cutting with the saw or whatever. I like to cut it straight. But sometimes you go crooked. <laughs> eh, it doesn't look so good. We're not rightly dividing these two pieces of wood and they're not going to match up to the wall that you know, you've probably got a, a gap that much in one, on, on one corner of, of the edge of that bit of wood. Like when you're doing the noggins of a framework. We've done a few frames over the years. If you don't cut it straight, if you don't rightly divide it, it's going to look hard and it's not going to be as strong. It's not going to be as strong. We've got to rightly divide the word of truth. And I know that phrase is just bandied around in Christian circles, but it's even like people that don't rightly divide the word of truth. See, things need to fit nice and square and plumb and true. Otherwise, the strength is not there. And it says in 1 Timothy 1.20, if you're on the same page, it is here, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called. So we are to shun unsound doctrine. We are to shun unsound doctrine. See, this is part of committing our way to the Lord, surrendering our way to the Lord. And I mean surrendering to him to Christ, is to study and show yourself approved, approved. Hebrews 13.9, just keep your finger in, in that, it's only a few pages over. Hebrews 13.9, it says here, Be not carried about with divers, or many, and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which have not been, sorry, which have not profited them, that have been occupied therein. So be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. This is what we're saying here. When you study, don't be studying stuff that's that's not true. Because then we're believing a lie. Colossians 2.8. We'll just go back from the uh, from Timothy. Colossians 2.8 has these words. Beware lest any man, any man, spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. See, it's vain. It's pointless. If it's a lie, then it's pointless. It's doing you no good. Which is why we've got to be careful to the shepherds that we listen to. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and look at this, and not after Christ. And not after Christ. If a pastor or a preacher is not teaching the things that are of Christ, then it's possibly another doctrine. It's possibly another doctrine. Beware it's vain if it's not of men, if it's of men and not of Christ. You see, we need to be approved of God, not approved of men. Approved unto God. Approved unto God. You see, it is embarrassing to do a job poorly and then to have your work examined. The Bible warns us that the work of each Christian will be examined at the judgment seat of Christ. In 2 Corinthians 5.10, I'll just turn it there in case you're not familiar with it. 2 Corinthians 5.10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. This is not the great white throne, this is the judgment seat of Christ at the beginning of the tribulation when we're caught up as the bible says that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done whether it be good or bad these are the things done for christ therefore we have another motivation to work diligently for the lord so we will not be ashamed at his coming or at the examination at the judgment seat of christ Point six, back to 2 Timothy, please. Point six in verse 20. Make sure. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth 
and some to honour, and some to dishonour. He if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honour, sanctified, a meat for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. You know, before you can be used of Christ, you need to be emptied first. You need to be emptied first. You need to have the iniquity gone. You need to have all the bad doctrines gone if you are really to be used of Christ. You need to start afresh. You need to start afresh. But you have got to be an empty vessel, emptied of yourself, if need be. Emptied of pride. Emptied of of covetousness and all those things that we've looked at over the last few months. You need to be an empty vessel. Empty of the cares of this life. Just like back in verse 4, let no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. See, you can become so entangled with life and the daily happenings of life that you're just so entangled with it that you lose sight of who you are committed to. Who are you supposed to be surrendered to? Once upon a time, you probably did surrender your life to Christ. You said, Lord, whatever happens, I will be your servant. But then life gets tough. And it does. It gets tough. And then we start taking our eyes off things. And our life starts to get a bit shabby. And it can happen in the, in the, in the same with a church, in the life of a church. People in it. And this is why we've got to commit our way unto the Lord. Commit our way. You know, the churches of God are indeed great houses. And this is what I'm liking it to here today. In a great house or in a church. Are they not vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honour and some to dishonour? Just think back to, to um, uh, that part in Corinthians where we're talking about gold, silver, and precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, that we're going to be presenting to Christ at the judgment seats. See, this is also in, the, in a church context. You know, a church house or a church is great because of who it belongs to. It belongs to Christ. This house of our great God is certainly a great house. It is a great house because it is planned and designed by the most brilliant architect. This church in itself is being designed by God. And this is where if we commit our ways to God and if we surrender to God, then we will be in his will and he can work through us. Remember, it's not us that is doing the work. We're letting him work through us. This is why we die to self. So self is not out there looking all important, filled with pride. I can't say that I sing with pride. <laughs> it is a great house because of the great cost it took Christ to build it. Just think of what he did for you on the cross. And we're not going to commit our ways unto him. And we're not going to surrender unto him. And we're not going to hand out hand tracks for him. It came at a great price. A great price. You know, this in itself is a mansion far more valuable than any real estate on earth. This church was built by the great work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Every church that belongs to the Lord can claim this. It was built by him. I will build my church, personal pronoun, not man's. Not man's. When you see the tradition of men, the rudiments of this world through men, and you see that what they're doing is just through man, and man is just getting all the glory, then it's not Christ's church, is it? He works through us. That's how he worked. It is a great house because of its importance. This house, this church, is what happens, and what happens in it is at the centre of God's plans. And that's the way he's worked it out for the last 2,000 years. His churches have been part of his plan to be the pillar and ground of the truth. You know, the business of this house is more important than any of the trivia most of the world is interested in. Is interested in. And isn't there a lot of trivia out there in the world today? And how a lot of churches operate. It's just trivia. You've got more programs that you can poke a stick at. Grams. But we need to be teaching people the doctrine. Especially 
Generation Z. And that's is why Generation Z today is so hungry and thirsty for the Word of God because they're not getting it. And woe betide us if we don't commit ourselves to the Lord, if we don't surrender to the Lord because at the judgment seat of Christ we will be sorry. What do you think he wipes away? to one of his churches. We didn't commit our way unto the Lord. We weren't a good soldier. We weren't an empty vessel. We kept ourselves full of the worldly things and all its cares and we were so entangled with it that we forgot Christ and we forgot how he brought this church and how he brought you individually. You see, there are some vessels of gold in a church and some of silver but also of wood and clay. This is where we need to look internally. Some of these vessels are made of gold and silver and yet some are used on occasions of great honour, like the gold and silver vessels, and some are used for dishonour, such as a garbage bin or in an ashtray. See, this is where we need to make sure that we've committed ourselves and we are a gold or a silver vessel for the Lord, completely sold out for Christ. Completely Forget about the things of the world and what you own. Think about what's in your carport. Think about what's in your house. It's not worth it. Because you will leave this place naked. Planet Earth. And you take nothing with you. Nothing. Nothing. Except what's in your heart. We see with the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man still had a, a heart of love for his brethren. He still had his heart. Even in his soul, he still had a heart. But he was still wicked. He knew why he was there. He didn't argue with Abraham about that one. But he still wanted to bully poor old Lazarus around. He thought he owned him. So you can see the, the correlation here between Second, second uh, Corinthians there, chapter, chapter 3. 2 Corinthians 3. No, it wasn't probably 1 Corinthians 3. If any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, and it shall be revealed by fire. So in the Lord's church here, what are we working on? Are we striving to surrender and commit ourselves to be vessels of gold and silver? Or are we just happy with the wood, hay and the stubble and we don't really care? See, it's all about the attitude. It's not what you're capable of doing. It's about your attitude and why you won't do something or step out in faith. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, the latter things are the things of dishonour, which we've just mentioned. So if we confess ourselves Sorry, if we cleanse ourselves from dishonourable things, God will regard us as vessels of honour, sanctified and useful for the Master. So we've got to cleanse ourselves from, from, um, from the dishonourable things, the things where we really don't care and it's our attitude. See, it's all about our attitude. It's just so interesting how that this verse here and, and what we're looking at when we're, we're studying it just coincides with the, the gold and the silver and the precious stones in 1 Corinthians 3. You know, I think we need to pay attention to what Scripture is telling us this morning. But point seven, the last point for the day, is to strive. Is to strive. In verse 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach and to be patient. See, we're not here to argue with people. We're not here to argue. We are not to strive. We are not to fight. We are not to argue. Instead, we need to be gentle, apt and ready to teach and to be patient. We need to wait on God in his timing in matters of winning the lost to Christ. We need to be. We need to be. We need to surrender as a collective of authorised, baptised believers to carry out the Lord's will in our Galilee. 
But the point is this morning, are you willing to surrender? Are you willing to surrender? Are you willing to be here on a Sunday? Are you willing to be here when it's music practice? Because we do need some help. <laughs> I think it's quite obvious. It's not up to the ones and twos, it's up to the Lord. Are you willing to commit? This is what Paul was telling Timothy. But commit unto faithful men. Commit unto faithful women. Join in. There's plenty to do. Are you willing to be faithful? Are you willing to teach? Are you willing to endure hardness, even though the world goes against you? And are you willing to go by God's standards lawfully, His standards, His commandments? Are you willing? Are you willing to be involved? Are you willing to be a farmer or a husbandman? Are you willing to plough up and sow the seeds? Are you willing? And are you willing to study? To study. Grab your Bible out and read it. And we've got plenty of books. We've got lots of good books on sound doctrine here. I don't buy anything that's rubbish. You can rest assured of that. We, we don't bring books in here that by anyone. We go through them and make sure. And are you willing to be a vessel unto honour? Not one unto dishonour. And the Lord will be saying at, the, at the, uh, the judgment seat of Christ. He said, look, I'm not worried about what's going to come out, Dad. And I'm not worried about... What I'm worried about is your attitude and your willingness to serve me. There were plenty of jobs in that church to be done, but you didn't want to do it. Can you tell me why? And you and myself included, we won't be able to answer because we know we're guilty. And we'll shed a tear. You will cry. I will cry. But he said he'll wipe it away. I'm looking about you, but I'm looking for that certificate, that one of well done there, good and faithful servant certificate that we will get at the judgment seat of Christ. If there is such a thing. But what I'm saying is that's what we're striving for. And we're going to do it lawfully. We're going to master it. Falling apart and eventually falling down. We're going to be like a straining post. Holding, that's what holds the post up. Why we to do it, except for Andy and I, and I'm hopeless because I've got to ask him what what have I forgotten? Is it on first or do I? Turn? <laughs> but there's always something for us to do. Join in and watch the church grow, because if in our hearts Christ looks down from heaven, gee, they really do like me. They really do serve me, and then work through us all. All be blessed. For Timothy, the same commit thou to faithful men and to teach others also. That is our job. That is what we've got to give to the next generation. Generation Z. And every other generation that comes after it. We've got to be faithful. How about we purpose in our hearts this week to surrender ourselves to the Lord again and be faithful. Let's get involved, brethren, and let's really push the Lord's church here. Folks need to be saved. It's as simple as that. Heavenly Father, just thank you, Lord, for your presence here this morning. We thank you for your words, Father, and I just pray that your words have touched hearts this morning, including mine, and Lord, we'll be more faithful more committed. And Father, we will rid our vessels, our bodies and our soul of everything that's wicked and that does not conform to your standards. And Father, that we're apt to teach all men, all things, 
And Lord, that's the only way that we can teach all things is through a church setting. Because as people come in, we can teach all things. But as individuals, the Lord, we can't go out and teach a new convert all things because you told us to go at the same time. We can't do both. But we know, Lord, in your churches we can. We can send people out and bring people in to be taught all things. Once again, Lord, we just thank you for today. We just pray you'll press these urgent matters on our hearts, Father, so we may serve you in the way that is acceptable, the acceptable day of the Lord. Once again, Lord, we just thank you. Take us away from this place and keep us safe physically, spiritually and mentally, Lord, in this world as it's slowly going nuts and bring us back at the next appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.